Hello, and welcome to 1.6 Acceleration Near Earth's Surface. This is the last lesson in Chapter 1, and we're talking about uniform acceleration. So on the last lesson, we learned a bunch of equations that deal with uniform acceleration. So in this lesson, we're going to look at one specific type of that acceleration, which is the acceleration we feel from gravity. And we're going to solve some problems dealing with gravity. So the acceleration due to gravity, well, this is the acceleration when an object is allowed to fall freely. So when you just let go of an object, it accelerates straight towards the ground at a rate of g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Doesn't matter how big or small that object is, doesn't matter where on earth you are, if you drop an object, it accelerates at that speed. So we've given it a special letter, g, for gravity. Now, in reality, it only ever accelerates at this full 9.8 meters per second squared when we're in free fall. And free fall is when there is no air resistance. So, in reality, usually we're not talking about free fall. This only actually happens, only actually happens in a vacuum. But for the problems we're going to be looking at in class, we're going to say it's close enough to a free fall. So we'll just say this is close enough to free fall most of the time that we can still use the equations. Okay, so um, that's acceleration due to gravity. We're going to look at two types of problems. The first type of problem is where we're falling straight down. We have an object that just falls straight down. Here it says, a flower pot is knocked off a window ledge and accelerates uniformly to the ground. If the window ledge is 10 meters above the ground and there is no air resistance, how long does it take to take, um, how long does it take the flower pot to reach the ground? So again, we're saying there's no air resistance, which means that it's undergoing free fall. And it's important that we say that. Okay, I'll draw a little picture of the problem here. So we have a window. We have a flower pot sitting on the window with some let's, little flowers here, and it drops off the ledge. So it starts falling towards the ground, and we're going to say that the ground is 10 meters away. And the question is, how long does it take before it hits the ground? Well, we can solve this problem. We use our grass method, so we're told that the acceleration now Acceleration is equal to g, 9.8 meters per second squared. And our displacement is 10.0 meters. And our initial speed is 0 meters per second. And notice I haven't written any directions on any of these. We're just going to deal with scalars for this part. Um, we could talk about vectors if we want, but this is all in one dimension, so we're good to go. Okay. We're required to find delta t, how long it takes. And what equation do we use? We use the equation that doesn't have, um, that has those measures, delta d, v, i, a, delta t. So the one that misses v, f. Looks like this. v, i, delta t, plus one half a, delta t squared. Good. So our solution here, delta d equals one half well, you can see that vi is zero, so this whole term just disappears. We have one half a is uh, 9.8 and delta t squared. Well, I'm going to rearrange this just to find my delta t. So delta t is equal to the square root of two delta d over a. And I'm just going to leave it like that. We can fill in our numbers now in just a second. So the square root of 2 
Delta D is 10 meters, so 2 times 10 divided by 9.8, and our answer is 1.43 seconds. And there we go. That's our final answer. Now you might notice, when we say 9.8 here, that only has two digits. I answered with three digits. Well, that's because our problem gave us three digits, and 9.8, we're saying that this is, this is the number. Now, we could actually use more decimals on that number, but we're just going to say 9.8 is the right number, and we're not going to worry about how many decimals that has. So that doesn't affect our significant digits. Okay? So we still use 3 because our problem gave us 3 digits. Alright, looking at part B, um, it says, what is the final velocity of the flower pot just before it hits the ground? Well, we have the same given informa information. Now we're required to find VF. Our equation, we can use, um, well, let's use this one, VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta D. And I'm choosing that one because delta T, um, we just calculated in the pre previous problem. So I want to keep to the, just the values we were given. Okay, so now I can get VF. It's the square root of, and we have VI squared, which is 0, plus 2 times 9.8 times 10 meters per second. And this will give me an answer of 14.0 meters per second. Good. And that's how fast we're going at the bottom. Alright, so that was a whole half of the lesson already. The second half now is similar, but now we're talking about problems where we throw something straight up. And you can see that it's going to look pretty similar. So here we have a tennis ball. It's thrown straight up in the air, leaving the person's hand with an initial velocity of 3.0 meters per second. So like this on the picture over here. How high from where it was thrown does the ball go? Notice it doesn't look like we were given a lot of information at all. But we can write this out. Given. We know that VI, and now I am going to use uh, some directions here. So VI is equal to 3.0 meters per second up. And I have the acceleration is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared down. And the last thing we know says how high does it go? At the very top our final velocity is going to be zero. When it gets to the top and it starts heading back down again, you can see that its speed right at the top is it's not moving at all, and then it starts getting faster and faster downwards. So the way we can solve that is by looking at where VF is equal to zero meters per second. Good. Now we've got our required. It wants to know how high it goes to the displacement. Equation. Well, we want an equation with those values, so we will use the same equation we had on the last page. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta D. And we have some vectors. Good. So our solution here. I want to solve for delta D. This is equal to VF squared minus VI squared over 2A. And now I can fill in some values. VF is 0 minus, um, and I'm going to choose up to be positive. So 3 squared divided by 2, and now remember my acceleration is downwards, so this makes it negative 9.8 because I've chosen up to be positive. Okay, if I take this whole thing here, I get 9 divided by um, 2 times 9.8. So 9 over 19.6. And notice that I had 
I could do this. It's negative 9 over negative 19.6. The negatives will cancel each other out. And so I get 9 over 19.6, which gives me 0 0.459 meters. And we check our digits now. We see that we were given two digits, so the answer is 0 0.46 meters. That's how high up it goes. And finally, how long will it take the ball to reach its maximum height? Well, we're given the same information, so I don't need to write my given again. Now we are required to find delta t. So we want to use a different equation. So I will use vf equals vi plus a delta t. Again, we have some vectors here. Okay, solution. First, I want to rearrange my equation to solve for delta t. It's vf minus vi over a. So again, vf was 0 minus 3. Remember, 3 is going to be uh, 3 was in my up direction, and a is negative 9.8 because it's pointing downwards. And this gives me 3 over 9.8, or 0 0.306 seconds, and I just rewrite that with my significant digits here. And there's our final answer. That's how we look at these problems. You'll have a chance during class time to look at number 3 to 7 there, so I hope that made sense, and I'll see you in the next lesson.